I'm surrounded by leather right now. Full hides, really beautiful. Also leather midsoles, rubber soles. These are raw materials. I'm at the JK Boot Factory in Spokane, Washington. Now I've been seeing these boots. Here's a finished one. My whole life. My grandpa wore boots like this. My dad wore boots like this. They worked in the woods. Corks have been around a long time. This particular cork length is suited for Oregon and California timber. These are actually removable now because, you know, often the corks would blunt before the uppers were wore out. Forest fire fighters wear boots like this. These are outdoor, heavy duty, off-road work boots. And for whatever reason, Spokane is like the, the mecca for these boots. There's other companies making them. They're all right here. Let's take a look at how it's done. These boots are handmade. There's no robots or automation anywhere in the factory. It's just a lot of really neat tools and skilled craftsmen using these tools, like this one. This is a hydraulic press. It's called a swing arm press. And as you can see, it is stamping out pieces from this cowhide. It's really fast, but there are times where they cut the leather out by hand. This is a skiving machine, which is reducing the thickness of the leather out on the edge. And then the uppers are sewn together on these big industrial sewing machines, which were really impressive. In fact, if you look, you can see that smoke kind of coming up off where the needle is. That's from the heat of the needle stabbing up and down through all these layers. It's really thick and it's a big thick thread. So it takes a lot of power and it takes a lot of skill to control it. And these guys, as you can imagine, are really good at it. When you look at the stitches in the boot, they're just graceful and smooth and uniform. And I, I'm guessing it's one of those things that looks a lot easier than it actually is. You can see this liner here, it's called a vamp, and you'll get a good look at that later. But first, look at this machine. It's called an eyelet machine, and it is instantly punching a hole and installing the little metal eyelets that the bootlaces go through. The most iconic tool in boot making and probably all of shoe making is the last. Over the centuries, they've been made from all sorts of different woods and metals, but these modern ones are made out of a high density plastic and there's a steel plate on the bottom. And you can probably tell it's kind of in the shape of a foot. And right here you can see, this is that thick leather insole. It's not wood, sometimes people think it's wood. And so that's trimmed and formed, you know, all nicely around this shape. And then we actually build the boot around this mold. It's called a last. Well, our boots spent the night wrapped around this last in a step called wet lasting. And what they do is they soak this leather, the upper, in water and then tack it and wrap it around the last while it dries out. And now it's time for the dry lasting. That's what Tim's working on now. Tim here was taught how to last a boot by his dad, John Codsey. And John is the founder of JK Boots. And it's one of the most beautiful stories. It's just the story of the American dream, really. In the 90s, John and his wife and his two kids moved to the US from the Ukraine. Uh, and he started working in a boot shop. He had been working as a cobbler in the old world. So this is what he was trained to do. And he brought his skills and learned the, the techniques and methods that were common in the US. And one thing led to another, and now here they are. Two of John's kids, Tim and Will, work in the shop. And as you can imagine, they know all the ins and outs of making boots. And Tim was gracious enough to sit down, let me put a mic on him to share some of this family history with us himself. At that time, the United States had opened up the doors for Christian refugees from the Soviet Union because the Soviet Union was persecuting believers you know, all throughout its history. And so I think that was uh, the Clinton administration at that time, they opened up the door for that, Soviet Union fell apart. And so boom, there was an opportunity right there. 
And, and plus there was that war going on, crazy story there. Like my parents are like getting shot at, like literally. So they took a, you know, the Russian military came in, got all the civilians out of there, took them to Moscow. Um, and so there was like an open door. They got interviewed, boom, got granted. You know, next thing they know, they're them and their two kids, my two oldest siblings at the time, 800 bucks in their pocket, two suitcases, and they're on a plane, you know, to Spokane. So that was March of 94. My parents landed in Spokane, and then literally like eight days later, my dad was already working full time, making making boots. What did he know someone in Spokane? He had a friend who um, had made it to, to, to America first, and who was also a bootmaker in that same shop in that country of Moldova. That friend was already working at a company in Spokane, and had said, "Hey, my 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 other friend is coming. We need to take him on because he's really really good." And that's how it happened. Well, as you can imagine, John and his family hit the ground running. He's still making and repairing boots to this day, and everything else is history. Tim told me that learning this lasting part of boot construction was the most challenging for him. And he said it's when people come and start working here, they almost either can do it or they can't. It just takes a, a, a level of, I don't know if it's instinct or just hand-eye coordination, but it's you're using leverage and you're having to use these simple tools like, you know, pliers and a fulcrum there to, to, stretch and pull and I think it's really one of those things that looks a lot easier than it actually is and by the way this fellow in the green shirt is a fan of essential craftsman so a big shout out to him and he's doing a great job lasting this boot now the next process for the boot is known as bottoming it basically means fastening and gluing the sole to this upper and there's a couple different layers to the sole and there's several processes that last is still inside here, which is important because you'll see Tim drive a bunch of nails down there and he'll explain that. But first, he's got to build up the arch a little bit with a cover shank to support the center of the boot. So after that glue is dried, we put it back on our boot jack. We're going to glue this cover shank down. What we need to do is we need to scratch up this area so that it sticks really well to the leather midsole. Because it's, it's, it's pretty smooth right now, so we need to kind of just scratch it up a little bit so that that adhesive really sticks in there nicely. Now we're ready to be bottomed. We're ready to put a leather midsole over the top of that and bottom it all the way through. So this area right here, this center area, this is where I'm gonna install something called a squeak pad. And all it is, is just a thin layer of leather. And the reason we put it right there is because this is that one spot where the insole could possibly have contact with the midsole. And when those two pieces rub against each other, that's what causes boot squeaking. So we're gonna place that right over the top. It's very thin. Its only purpose is just to keep those two from squeaking. And then we're just going to continue to move on and we'll put glue over it. So after the boot's been shanked and we've glued uh, and we've glued the midsole, we've glued the boot, it's dried, it's seeped into the leather. We need to reactivate that adhesive with heat. And so we put it into this you know, uh, oven, custom oven, and it's gonna heat for about maybe 45 seconds. And then all that adhesive is gonna reactivate and then we're gonna stick these together.
we're gonna get to work. These are the nails that we're using. We're gonna do two rows of bottoming. And the way that I know where I wanna bottom is if you guys remember that slit that we made, I feel it's about right there. And what I want is I want my nail to cover that area about an inch up. And so the idea there is that the bottoming is securing this area down so nothing will leak. And so there's that incision right there. So my bottoming, it's gonna start first row right there. My first row is gonna go right next to that cover shank that we installed earlier. And the idea of these nails is they're gonna suck down this midsole and they're gonna cinch it into place. And you can actually see how as I'm bottoming, it's bringing that midsole into shape. And you can see the outline of that cover shank right there. I'm putting my, my second finger on the heel of the boot and I'm feeling kind of where, you know, because this is sticking out a little bit past the boot, right? So I'm feeling where I need to put it. And I just know just from experience, you know, exactly where my nail, nail needs to go. Being in the factory here was really neat. It felt, to be honest, initially almost old fashioned because a lot of the tools and even you know the hammers and the stitching machines, which you'll see, just resemble and, and feel like something from another era. And in some ways they are. There was a time, of course, when all footwear was handmade. That's just how you got them. Somebody had to make them. And now I think a lot of sh boots are made from machines, but it's still really neat seeing how it's done today. I don't think it's terribly, terribly different from the way it was done decades ago. Um, I'm sure that the exact you know chemistry of the glues and the leather has improved a lot, so I'm sure they're much, much better. But these, this technique of nailing and fastening the, the sole and the midsole to the upper and then stitching it all through and using that last all of these things have been around for quite a while and it was cool seeing these younger guys like tim who have developed their their hand at this craft and just watching them go to town like i may have mentioned earlier the different jobs in the facility are, are broken down into teams so the bottoming right here that you're watching is a handful of guys doing this and this is what they do and they become really good at this particular thing and then same with the sewing and the lasting that you saw so it was just really neat watching these guys who've got great muscle memory great you know hand skills on this trade that is a little old-fashioned
my bobbin ran out. Jeez. <laughs> Classic. Yeah. Here. I'm gonna open that up, take that out. And those are actual bobbins. Wow, it's like a gigantic yes. one from what a sewing machine would have. Yeah. And this thread is being uh, fed through this canister that has wax inside oh, wow. so that it gets fed through um, and it's not all dry and you know it, it will be hard for the machine and right through there and these two areas there we go see there's two parts there's an awl and then the needle and so the awl punctures a hole through the material, and then the needle comes through and it grabs that thread. So we can watch, so it'll come through, see the needle comes down, grabs the thread and pulls it up. Wow. That's how it works. That yeah, is so time. cool. So, comes down, grabs the thread, yeah. and pulls it up. Wow. Yeah, pretty awesome. Yeah, there we go, right there. So after the boots have been stitched, the soles have been stitched through, next is heels. The heel has two layers. There's a little stack of leather, and then there's a rubber cap. But the wild thing is these nails. These are clinch nails, and they go all the way through all of it, and that, then they're hitting the last, that's that steel plate that's temporary inside the boot, and they clinch. They bend around and suck everything together. So no, you're not stepping or feeling nails when you walk around in these boots. What I'm doing actually is I'm lining up this uh, cross with the cross right here. And I'm almost pointing this like towards maybe the pinky toe of where that customer's foot would be. And here we go. The principle remains the same. All the nails are going in ever so slightly angled because we want all the nails everything to go to the center. The rubber cap on the heel is held down with glue and then more nails. And one thing that the video editing doesn't show really well is every time after the glue is applied, Tim is setting it off to the side to kind of dry and it gets tacky. In fact, you can see it in the back there on the other boot. These particular two holes, I didn't put any nails in on purpose because that's where we're gonna put screws in. This area just gets so much tough wear and is usually kind of the first spot to anything would come undone. And so we use these screws, these tightening screws, just to really get in there and really suck that area down. In, slight angle, and just barely, right there. Well, the grinding room and the whole grinding process was where things started to look a little more familiar for me because it was kind of similar to the grinders and the, you know, the type of grinding my dad does and that I've filmed a lot. Lots of different wheels, lots of different grits and a very steady hand because grinding, you, you can take it away quick and you can't put it back on. So it was fun watching Tim do this. You could tell he's done it. Um, once or twice before, he knew exactly what he was doing and really cleaned these things up and finished them nicely.
from here, it's the finishing touches and fine tooth comb kind of detailed cleanup touch up. And this big grinding bar really is really just the tool for it because I don't know how many different wheels there were, but there's brushing wheels and polishing wheels and every type of shape to get into nooks and crannies. Very cool. Tim also dyes at this point the leather on the midsole to get, kind of dress it up a little bit, and I'm guessing that protects it as well. So that was kind of cool to see. And if these boots were going to a customer from here, they would get laces and boxed up and shipped out. But Tim and his family were generous enough to give these boots to me, so I wore them home. Well, many thanks to Tim and everyone at JK Boots for letting me come get really up close and personal and film this craft to share it with our audience. They made a coupon code as well, so if you need some heavy-duty work boots, look in the description. There is a code for our viewers. It's not an affiliate link or anything. It's just some savings for you on some work boots if you need them. And they've got lots of other models besides this one. They're all really beautiful. And as you can see, they do not cut any corners. So thanks for watching, everyone. Keep up the good work. We'll catch you next time.